Hi, I'm Tim, and this is my tiny home. When I had my landmate build this, when we were designing it, we tried to make it not be a bus, not have a little aisle down the middle and have it all divided up. We decided to keep it simple, so there are basically two rooms with a loft for a bed up there, which I'll show you from the other side. In the winter, I heat with and cook with and dry my clothes with and my food with a wood cook stove, which is lovely. Um, I have drying racks just hanging from the roof. I keep planning on making them nicer, but this is what I have. Um, I have a floating island in the kitchen, which is really great because it gives me a lot of storage and I process most of my own food, so I need more equipment than the average kitchen. And I can roll this completely out of the way if I need to, it, so that the whole house basically becomes one big living room for a while. And then there's this area, which I call the living room, with storage shelves here. There's my food. I live on uh, solar power, so I have a 12 volt battery and that powers all of my LED lighting year round, all the lighting I need. Um, in December and January I can't charge up my cell phone and my laptop, but the rest of the year I can charge those on an inverter. I just have two really inexpensive Canadian tire folding photo cells and they give me plenty of power. Um, I did built-in benches because you can hide more stuff under the benches again, more storage. Most of my clothing and a whole bunch of other strange stuff is hiding under there. And then up here is my bed, which is accessed from these bookshelf type stairs. And that just leads up to a very messy bedroom. So what I'm thinking is when I get older, I will add a, a fold down ladder stair that I can walk up. Um, one of the things I've noticed is I have a mild book addiction. And so shelving is at a precious premium. I've decided to create more shelves in little spaces here and there. Yes. In a, a tiny home forces you to get rid of your excess. So I really sort of have to look at my books every now and then and go, do I really want to keep this one? Have I been reading it? Will I refer to it? If I don't, it goes to the free store. So these are the solar panels that I use for the power in the house. And as I said, these two panels give me enough electricity to power LED lighting in the house all year round. Plus lots of other stuff in the rest of the year. And here's my greenhouse. Which I just attached to the house so it had the heat sink of the walls. And at the moment, the little greens are just starting to come. I chose to live in a tiny home because I became aware that worldwide we have approximately, I believe, one acre per person available to provide all of our needs. Our energy for transportation, the goods for the transportation, our clothing, our housing, and our food all need to come from that acre on average. And so if you're using up a large portion of that acre for your house footprint, you're not going to be able to produce what you need in that acre. And so I started looking at, at living my life more realistically based on those ideas. Um, and I like the idea of a hundred square foot home, which is supposedly in most municipalities and cities, etc., 
if you build something under a hundred square feet, you don't actually have to get a permit. You can simply tuck it in, supposedly. Now this could totally have changed. They probably plugged all these loopholes, but the idea was there. So I'm like, what could I make with 10 square feet? And then looked at my lifestyle, which I'm living off grid. I produce almost all my own food, both vegetable and animal. And so I needed processing equipment and storage space and et cetera. And so I decided on 240 square feet. So those are my reasons and where I ended up. The benefits of living in a tiny space, the main one for me being that it forces me to look at my stuff and say, do I really need this thing? Am I using this thing? Does it provide me joy? Does it bring beauty to my world? If it, the answer to all of the above is no, then it needs to go somewhere else. It can be totally useful and totally wonderful, but if, it's, if I'm not using it, somebody else may as well be. And every extra item that I don't use becomes another item laying on top of my table and et cetera. And so I need to, to go through them. And the house just sort of makes that a normal thing. I go through my books constantly, getting rid of the ones that I'm not using and not reading. And because otherwise I, I would just end up buried under a book pile one day. Other advantages are it's easy to keep warm, it's easy to cool, um, it's easy to clean if you decide to do so. <laughs> it, it's cozy. It's, it's human-sized. You, you don't feel like a pea in a pod. It, it fits. Is, yeah. I think maybe that's the biggest benefit of all, is it just fits. Like I go up to bed and, and my ceiling is four feet away and it feels right. It, it feels like I'm in a cocoon, but not trapped. Making it seem as spacious as possible while gaining um, storage space as much as possible is, is one of the biggest challenges I run into. Doing things that are economical space-wise but still work for my lifestyle was a definite challenge. Having windows really helped with the, the spaciousness. Having big windows gave a lot more space. Now it does take away space that you can put shelves and counters and etc. on. So there's a trade-off there. But I would not get rid of my windows. Those I would totally keep. They need to have some opening because it's real easy with a wood stove to smoke yourself out in a small space in like three seconds. Shane estimated it was thirty thousand dollars for me. This one, this house is is pretty solid wood. The floors and the the ceiling or or the bed floor, as you want to call it, are all of two by material. So there's there's a lot of wood in this place. Mm -hmm. it, Wood costs money. If, if you go to the lumber shop, wood is not cheap. Mm -hmm. So I felt $30,000 was quite good. Now, we did use repurposed windows and a repurposed door and those sorts of things. I would completely recommend it to someone who has some farming-type skills and who wants to live as close to the land as possible and is unable to go out somewhere where they can hunt for their food. <clears throat> this is about as, as close to the land as you can get. I had always, all my life, I had dreamed about designing my own home. I, I've never really had the skills to build it, but I've had the imagination <laughs> to design lots of them. And the older I got, the smaller those homes became. They were never huge. I think the biggest one was like 800 square feet when I was 18. Um, but they slowly but surely shrank. They got down to the 100 square feet and then I had to go back up again just to deal with reality. I'd recommend if you wanted to do something like this to, to live this kind of lifestyle, it 
might be a good idea even to woof or something of that kind, do, do a, um, an apprenticeship on a, a permaculture or organic farm where people are living in tiny homes or are at least housing their, their woofers in tiny homes. Um, to get an idea of, of what it feels like to live the lifestyle and in that kind of space. And also I'd recommend that you look at lots of people's spaces. When I started looking, I went online and everything I found was chopped up and all on grid. So, you know, there, there was a bathroom with a flush toilet and a kitchen with a fridge and a stove and and all chopped up out of a, a 200 square foot house. Um, and I, I knew I didn't want to feel like I was in a bunch of closets. And so finally Shane said, well, just design your own. So I did. Um, I designed this completely open and then Shane had, due to structural reasons, had to put in the pony walls, the two foot pony walls. And so then the shelves came in to play from that. The bench was just going to go to there. Other than that, we've kept it as open as possible just so that the living room can extend out to the barrel or the kitchen can be really big and this can just be a tiny little space off to the side. Things I wish I'd known before I got into this. There is water piped in here from a, a central dugout and I wish I'd looked more into putting in plumbing. I mean, Shane did it and he did a fine job, but it changed the design of the house because of how it had to be done. And, and I'm fine with that. If I'd have known, I might have designed it a little differently. I dreamt for a long time before I actually did this. And, and so I'd read as much as I could find. I'd looked online as much as I could at the time. So I had some really good ideas of where I wanted to go. Um, <clears throat> and then a couple of things dictated the size of the space so that I ended up with a, a 10 by 24 foot home. And I'm, so then I'm like, okay, if it's 10 by 24, how do I design that so that it flows nicely, so that it works well? And between what I designed and what... Shane said, well, we have to change this because, and then I'd design some more, and then he'd do some things and change something, and then I'd design some more, and we ended up with this. Having a, a carpenter, a, a builder you can work with is a, a wonderful thing. You know, work with in terms of, of be able to do that give and take of, I'd like to see this, well, we can't really do that, but how about this and those sorts of things. My personal philosophy on life is actually is about abundance. It's, it's about recognizing when I have enough and that anything beyond that enough is abundance and shareable and giveable and um, the older I get, the more I've developed the philosophy that if somebody needs something enough of mine that they just take it without asking or without me saying, here, have it. If they need it that badly, I really don't care that they've taken it. Because I have enough and more than enough. Hi everyone, hope you enjoyed this episode in the Alternative Dwelling series. If you wanted to see more, a playlist is popping up right now where you can watch every episode we've ever made. Uh, don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button and check out the links in the description if you want to support this channel and this show. And we'll see you next Monday for another episode of Alternative Dwellings.